Welcome to Dwell in the Word. Today is Wednesday, September 22nd. We're going to begin with a prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. O Lord, we beseech you favorably to hear the prayers of your people, that we who are justly punished for our offenses may be mercifully delivered by your goodness, for the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Okay, we are in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 today. We're going to read from verse 1 through verse 13. Hear the word of the Lord. For I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, with most of them God was not pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these little things took place as examples for us, that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not be idolaters as some of them them were, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did, and twenty-three thousand fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test, as some of them did and were destroyed by serpents, nor grumble, as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now these things happened to them as an example, but they were written down for our instruction, on whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation He will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. So we come to chapter 10 and Paul is giving the people in the church in Corinth instructions on how to live. And he starts out by saying, hey, I don't want you to be unaware that our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Well, what is he saying here? What is his concern? Well, He wants everybody to know these stories you know about Moses, the stories you know about the people in the wilderness, not everyone there would have been saved. They all were a part of the people of Israel. They all passed through the the Red Sea and they were spared, but they did not, um, they were not all necessarily saved because some of them were in disobedience. And the best I've ever heard this explained for me to understand it was by Kim Riddlebarger on a long episode ago of the White Horse Inn many, many years ago. And he said that what we need to understand is there were people who were in Israel when they were faithful. They were a part of the covenant. They were a part of all this, but they didn't believe and they would not have been saved. But there were also people when Israel was in uh, disobedience, when they were in exile, and yet there were people then who had faith and trusted in the promise, who trusted looking forward to Christ. And even though they were amongst a a group of many unbelievers, they would have been saved because of their faith. And so that's the idea here that we're seeing, that even though the people were in a time of blessing and many people believed, there were those who were disobedient in the wilderness. That was the point. As it says, nevertheless, with most of them, God was not pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Many of them did not believe. We also see here, before we move on to the end of it, we also see something important that reminds us how to interpret uh, an Old Testament passage. As we think back, I believe it's Exodus chapter 17, where the people are thirsty and they're grumbling for water. They say, give us something to drink. And, and God provides water for them by Moses striking a rock. Well, Paul is telling us that that rock was pointing to Christ. That rock, that, that rock, when it was struck, it was Christ being struck and pouring out uh, water for his people. And so that helps us to understand how we look forward to the fulfillment in Christ in these Old Testament narratives. But as we come down, Paul has been talking here about the people remaining faithful, that they need to stand strong. And look at what he says in verse 12. This is this uh, verses 12 and 13 here are, are powerful stuff for us, uh, important for us to pay attention to. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. Hey, we know this. We know this. The, the stronger we think we are, the more likely we are to fall, right? 
And Paul is saying, hey, even if you think you're following God faithfully, make sure that you are ready to face temptation. And he says here, no temptation is overtaking you that is not common to man. What, what we face isn't something that nobody has experienced before, or none of, or, and it's not something that any of our brothers and sisters around us aren't experiencing also. And so we need to understand that these are temptations, but we can face them. We can come up against them. And notice what he says. He doesn't, he doesn't say to the people, well, you go after it here. What does he say? He says, God is faithful first. He's saying, you can do this because God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. What awesome news that is for us. You know, we know that we have been saved in Christ, but we face those temptations every day. But God does not let us be tempted beyond our ability, and he does provide a way of escape. How great is that? So may we, as we step into the world today, be thinking as we face the temptations that the world is going to throw at us, may we be thinking, how can we escape this? How can we be running from the temptation? And the number one way that we do that is we run to Christ, the one who was struck in the wilderness to provide water for his people, right? He will provide for us. And we need to run to him. So we need to have our mind set on him and not on the things of the world. So may we be having his word in our mind today. And may we trust that the Spirit will be feeding us today. Let us go to prayer. Triune God, we praise you for you are the rock from which we drink. We know that when we are in the wilderness of despair, you will supply us what we need for you are the Savior who supplies life to your people. Grant that we would be your faithful servants today as we wander in the wilderness of a lost and dying world. Today we lift up to you the missionaries that our congregation supports, both those in our own nation and those who serve in different parts of the world. We especially lift up the work of Brian and Beth Bruxfort in Alaska. Grant them safety as they work with the people there. Bless the work of their hands and strengthen them as they proclaim the message of salvation in the Lord Jesus. As we step out into the world today, we know that we will face many temptations. We thank you for the reminder in your word today that you provide us a way of escape from them. Grant that we would be strengthened by that word that we have heard and by the Holy Spirit that is within us, that we might walk in holiness. We pray this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, have yourself a very good Wednesday.